Hi there, so welcome to the broadcast today. It's the business lecturer in Wudin Show. Very much excited for having you. Comments below with any questions that you have. We are continuing and definitely today concluding on our discussion on business finance, sources of capital, uh, sources of funding, uh, calculation of cost of equity, cost of debt, uh, and also dealing with the weighted average cost of capital. This is the part four. We started on Tuesday, Wednesday, yesterday, and today. So in case you've missed these parts, you can check the playlist and the link below this video and you can watch that as well. So if you have any questions, put them in the comment box. Today we are concluding on the business finance. It's been long, but this is a critical topic in financial management. So I needed to take my time to go through it and also be able to answer any questions that you are having. So if you have any questions, maybe you join the broadcast from Tuesday, on Wednesday, or probably on Thursday, or you've watched the lecture videos and you have any questions, put them in the comment box. As today, I take you through the concluding aspect of calculating cost of debt as well as calculating the weighted average cost of capital. And we will say goodbye to um, business finance for now. And as and when the exams get closer, we're definitely going to be solving some questions on business finance to assist you better to prepare and to pass your examination. So comment below with any questions and let's get into the broadcast real quick. So we are concluding on the business finance. Any questions, put them in the comment box and then let's deal with that. Let me open my slide on uh, our discussion today and the questions that we're going to be practicing today. Let me open my slide on that real quick, then we get into the discussion. Give me a moment, okay? Let me get my slide. Uh, thought I had opened it earlier, but I hadn't opened it. Slide cannot open. Can you imagine that? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, let's do this. All right. Got my slide now open. Right. So, just a quick recap on what we've been discussing on so far. In business finance, we discuss the issue about the fact that business finance is about two things. It's about where do we get the money from, sources of finance, and then what is the cost of the money and that is cost of capital. And other sources of finance, we discuss various issues about the short-term sources of finance, bank overdraft, uh, what else did we mention? Bank overdraft, we also spoke about uh, trade credits, we spoke about short-term bank loans. These are short-term sources of finance. Then we came to the long-term sources of finance and we said in the long-term, we're gonna be using the pecking order theory, the pecking order theory. And the pecking order theory states that an entity when looking for finance goes to uh, debt uh, equity shareholders first 
So it goes to retain earnings. So we go to retain earnings. I don't know, my Wi Fi is not charging. And it's at lower three also. Give me a moment, okay? Let me get this going. Okay, we're good now. We're good. So, in the long term success of finance, we follow the pecking order theory. Now, in the pecking order theory, what we mentioned was that when entities are looking for finance, first they go to retain earning. So, in the retain earning, they are going to be asking themselves, all right, can we get money from the reserves that we have? Have we retained enough profit? If that is not enough, then they go to the second level, the debt, before they will go to equity shareholders for additional funding. And we mentioned that the reason why the, equity, the debt is prioritized over equity is because debt is tax deductible. Then we said, when it comes to the debt, there are various types of debt. We have loan notes, we have debentures, we have the bonds, uh, cumulative debentures, all of these things are there. But when it comes to equity, the entity has two choices. For instance, if the entity is listed or it is quoted on the stock exchange market, then the entity can decide to do a public issue or can do a public issue by uh, public issue for sale by tender or can do placing or can do a right issue. Then under the right issue, we solve a question on how the right issue is done and how all the computation are done for the organization. Then the last thing we did was to talk about the differences between bonus issue and strip dividend. Bonus issue and strip dividend. Actually, that was a question that uh, I think Ivan Snomashi asked when we were talking about the strip dividend and then um, uh, bonus issue. We said. Bonus issue is the issue of free shares, new shares to the equity shareholders by converting reserves into stated capital. So when we convert reserves into stated capital, we are obtaining or getting what is called a bonus issue. But strict dividend is offering the shareholders equity shares instead of cash dividend. So instead of giving them cash dividend, we give them equity shares in relation to that. Then we came to the issue about the cost of capital. And yesterday we spent time to look at how we can calculate the cost of equity using the dividend module as well as the capital asset pricing module. So today we want to look at the final aspect of the slide and look at the issue in relation to cost of debt. So how do we calculate the cost of debt and how do we calculate the weighted average cost of capital? That is what we want to look at today. So if you have any question, comment below anything on what we've discussed so far from Tuesday. This is the fourth part of it. So from Tuesday, whatever we've discussed so far, if you have any questions, put them down. If there are any topics you want me to cover in any other subject also, put it in the comment box or the chat box and I'm gonna be reading all of them and also look at them so that from Monday, we will look at something else or discuss something else in relation to that. So let's get into the discussion for the day and see where we are going to be. Definitely, we're going to be concluding the discussion today on business finance. So let's go to cost of debt. So cost of debt. The symbol here is KD. That is K substrate D, so KD. Now, when it comes to calculating the cost of debt, you have to ask yourself whether the debt is a redeemable debt or an irredeemable debt. Because the computation of the cost of debt is based on whether the debt is redeemable or irredeemable. Very, very important. So you don't just jump and say, I'm calculating cost of debt. You have to read from the question, find out from the question and ask yourself, is this debt, is this loan note, 
Is this debenture a redeemable debenture or an irredeemable debenture? Because the way we calculate the cost of debt for a redeemable debenture is different from the way we calculate it for an irredeemable debenture. So in calculating cost of debt, two questions can, uh, should be asked. Whether the debt is irredeemable or the debt is redeemable. I don't know, but I think my marker is a bit faint. I don't know. My marker appears to be a bit faint. Let me change it real quick. So let me change this. So let's go. Went to grab a marker so we can roll. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat box. Let me answer them for you, okay? Very important. Today is the last day of the month. Is it today last day? Okay, today is 28th. Tomorrow is 29th because this is a late year. So from Monday, we're going to be starting with some new sessions as well that will help you to understand. So let's go. Cost of debt. Two questions. Is the debt a redeemable debt or an irredeemable debt? So let's start with the first one. Redeemable, uh, sorry, irredeemable debt. So if we are dealing with irredeemable debt, then our cost of debt, KD, okay, cost of debt, KD will be equal to I over PO. I over PO. I means interest. PO is the market value of the bond. I'm going to explain this for you to get it. Now, this is without tax. This is without tax. In other words, when we are dealing with irredeemable debt, it could be with tax or without tax. Remember, debt is tax deductible, right? Because debt is tax deductible, always we are going to be looking at the tax version of it. So if there is tax, then the formula will be modified. So cost of debt will be I over PO 1 minus T. I over PO 1 minus T. So how do we go about it? So we say where the I is the interest rate on the nominal value of the bond. And then PO is the market value of the bond. Okay? And then T is the tax rate. Are you following me? So T is the tax rate. So what are we saying? It can either be with tax or without tax. So how do we go about it? Please note all the time. This is a very critical statement. Write it down. Very important. The interest we are bringing here is always the coupon rate or the interest rate on the nominal value of the bond. On the nominal value of the bond. Now, when we say the nominal value of the bond, nominal value of, of a bond is always 100 Ghana cities or 100 dollars. So 100 dollars or 100 Ghana cities or 100 pounds or 100 euros. Whatever currency unit you are using, always nominal value is hundred dollars, hundred Ghana cities, hundred euros, hundred uh, uh, pounds. So that is the idea. So the interest rate you're going to be bringing as the numerator is always the coupon rate times hundred. Always the coupon rate times hundred. This is a very very important statement. That is why I am emphasizing on it to assist you to understand this very very well. So once we are dealing with irredeemable debt, these are the two formulas available for us. So let's crunch some numbers and let's see how we go about it. So let me open my kit. 
And then let me look at a question we can use. Okay, now remember, since Tuesday when we started, I've been looking at the, or I've been using the um, um, open tuition uh, kit, okay, the open tuition uh, book, because like I said, it has some questions inside and concepts in that book are uh, quite simplified for students to understand. So the questions I'm solving and I'm going through are from the Open Tuition book and you can download the book on their website opentuition.com and uh, you can get the questions and get the concepts also there. So let's look at a question from the book. FPLC has an issue 8% redeemable debentures quoted at 90 pence x int quoted at 90 pence x int a what is the return to investors that is cost of debt and b what is the cost to the company if the rate of tax is 30 percent now let me make this statement well here remember when we were calculating cost of equity ke I told you that the market value we bring is always the x int market value or yes the market value x not cum d but rather x d so when it comes to calculating the cost of debt also the market price we bring here will be x int are you getting it not cum int that is the concept there so in this question We've been given, we've been told that the interest rate is 8%. And then the market value, PO, is 90 pence. Okay? So what do we do? A says we should calculate the return to the investors, which is the cost of debt. So how do we go about that? Now, because there is no tax in the A aspect of the question, it is simply going to be what? The first formula. So that is going to be I over PO. Now remember, all of these formulas I put down here are times 100. So we are going to express them in what? Percentages. So I over PO. So now, look at the interest here, 8%. Remember the interest I told you here should always be on the nominal value of the bond. On the nominal value of the bond. So how do we go about that? So if I'm looking for the interest, it's going to be 8% of $100. And that is going to be how much? $8. Simple. That is going to be $8. So if I'm calculating my cost of debt, KD, it's going to be $8 over the 90 times 100. And so let's see what I get in that case. Let's punch that out. Let's see. Where's my calculator? So that's going to be eight, okay?
5%. So that is how we will be able to compute what? The KD. So like you can see in this question, you realize that the A aspect of the question, there is no tax. So the cost of debt directly will become 8.89%. Then we go to the B aspect of the question. In the B aspect of the question, the examiner said we should calculate the cost to the company if the tax rate is 30%. So because in the B there is tax, it means we are going to be using what? The second formula. So we say cost of debt, that is KD, will be equal to I 1 minus T over PO. I 1 minus T over PO. So our interest is $8. Our tax rate is 30%. So that will be 1 minus 0 0.3 divided by the market value of 90. So when we do the arithmetic, we are going to get 6.32%. Now, I want you to understand what we are doing here very well. So you will see that in the first illustration, because we did not factor the tax into it, the cost of the debt was 8.89%. But debt is tax deductible. So when we factor the tax into it, we can see that now the cost of debt to the company is 6.66. So it tells you that because debt is tax deductible, as the tax is paid, the cost of debt falls down at all. It is for this reason that is why Modigliani and Miller say that a company can be geared up to say 100%, 99.9%, .9 and it will affect the company. Why? Because the cost of debt will fall because the interest is tax deductible. That is the concept about that. So that is the first thing you must understand about cost of debt. That is, is the debt redeemable or irredeemable? If the debt is irredeemable, then that is how we go about it. Now, let me know if the sound is okay. For those of you who are online, let me know if the sound is okay, you are able to hear me well. Because more or less like, uh, the sound is not too good to me. So let me know if the sound is okay, so that if I have to adjust, I will adjust. Alright. Now, so when we come to the redeemable debt, so if the debt is redeemable, how do we calculate the cost of debt? For redeemable debt, the cost of debt is the present value of the interest and the redemption. Dominic, I can't see. The sound is bad. Okay. Let me see what I can do about that real quick. Because I, I am sensing that the sound is not too good. Dominic, thank you. Let me see what I can do about that.
the sound is not okay. Oh, oh, oh. So give me a moment. Give me a moment. Let me see. The issue is that the issue is that it's currently raining here, very, very heavy, and so. Maybe my internet has started misbehaving. I'll still be on, but give me a moment. Let me see if I can uh, uh, continue real quick. Right, so let's continue with our discussion. I think the sound should be okay now.
So I think the sound should be okay now. So let's continue with our discussion. Let me know if the sound is quite okay now. Trying to fix my box and see if my box and see if we can get a better sound through that. Right, so let's continue. So, <clears throat> two things you have to understand with uh, the issue about uh, redeemable bonds or redeemable uh, debt, how do we calculate the cost of debt? What do we do? How do we go about it? So let's see how we compute the cost of debt for redeemable debt. For, so for an irredeemable debt, we are going to be using this formula either with tax or without tax. And like you can see, you realize that when we included tax, the cost of debt actually was four because interest is always that the, uh, tax deductible in relation to that. So let's come to redeemable debt. So when it comes to redeemable debt, how do we calculate the cost of debt? For redeemable debt, the cost of debt is equal to the internal rate of return. <laughs> so make sure you follow me here because I'm going to be dropping some bombs here to assist you in relation to what we are doing well. So with redeemable debt or redeemable bonds or redeemable debentures, what happens is that the cost of debt is equal to the internal <coughs> rate of return. The cost of debt is equal to the internal rate of return. So what do we mean by the internal rate of return? If you remember from investment appraisal, the internal rate of return is A plus NPVA over NPVA minus NPVB, B minus A, all percent. So what does that mean there? It means that in for redeemable debt, we are going to discount the cash flows on the debt. So what are we going to be discounting? We will bring, and, and because we are calculating internal rates of returns, it means we will be using trial and error. So the benchmark rule is that always start with 10%. So the first one you're going to be doing, start with 10%. If you start with 10% and the first NPV is positive, it means that the interest rate is too low, so you increase what? The discount factor to maybe 15 or 20. But if you do the 10% and you do the, this uh, present value and you realize that it is negative, that means the 10% was too high, so in the second schedule, you reduce it. I hope you are getting the treatment. So this is a trial and error thing. But in order for us to have a benchmark, we will start with what? The 10%. So when you start with the 10%, if it is positive, you increase it. If it is negative, you reduce it. That is the rule about the internal rate of return. So what kind of cash flows do you discount? So you will bring the market value of the bond. Okay? You bring the market value of the bond. So you're going to be bringing here, here, you're going to bring cash flow, you're going to be bringing the discount factor, you're going to look at the present value. So the year, year zero is the now. Year zero is now. So now you bring the market value of the bond. And whatever the market value is, and that will be in brackets, because the market value of the bond will be in brackets. Then the discount factor, because we are doing the first one, we will use 10% for the discount factor for the first one, 10%. Then, so whatever discount rate you get, 0 0.909. Okay, in year zero, it's 1.00, so it's still going to give you the same market value. So the first element you bring is the market value of the bond. Then you look at the interest rates payable over the life of the bond. 
So if the bond is will be redeemable in five years time, then you break from year one to year five, then the interest will be brought here. Now, this interest that will be brought here, if there is tax in the question, then the interest will be should be the interest after tax. But if there is no interest uh, uh, tax in the question, then the normal interest will be brought here. Now, then you come to the fifth year. So I am using this pro forma to say that we are assuming that the question. Yeah, I'm using this pro forma to say that we are assuming the bond is redeemable in what? Five years' time. So if it is redeemable in five years' time, then this is what we do. Now, in the fifth year, it will be redeemed. So in the fifth year, redemption. They will bring the redemption value here. But this is what you have to note. On redemption, there are four options available. I think I spoke about this later on or earlier in the part three or the part two. When it comes to debt, there are four things you have to understand on redemption. On redemption, they can be redeemed at par. They can be redeemed at a discount. They can be redeemed at a premium or they can be converted into equity shares. So there are four options available to the holders when it comes to redemption. The figure we bring here about the redemption in the, in the year of redemption is based on what the question says. So if they say the debt is redeemable at par, it means it will be redeemable at the nominal value, which is the hundred dollars, or the hundred dollars, or the hundred pounds, or the hundred euros. So it will be redeemed at the nominal value. It means that hundred is what will bring them. If it will be redeemed at a premium, that means it will be redeemed at a price above the nominal value. So if they say it will be redeemed at a 15% premium, then we find 15% of the hundred, and that is going to be 15, and added to the hundred, that will be 115. So because it will be redeemed at a premium of 15%, then on the date of redemption, we will bring 115 there. If it will be redeemed at a discount, is the opposite of that, which means it will be redeemed below the nominal value. But the third one is that the entity or the holders may convert it into shares. So in that case, we will calculate the share value per hundred dollar bond, and that is what we are going to be what we bring in here. So you have to be careful about the fifth year what you bring there. Now, so. How do you read the discount factor? This is also important. The interest, which is year one to year five, you read the discount factor on the annuity table. On the annuity table. So I guess I should have my annuity table here. Let me see if I have it here. So that I can refer to it real quick and read for the uh, five periods that I should have in here. Annuity table. The annuity table is always the second table. So the annuity table, ten percent, the fifth period is going to be four point three two nine. Okay, four point three two nine. So the interest after tax or the interest without tax, depending on the question, we will read that on the annuity table, the, pre the discount factor. Then the redemption will be read on the present value table. The redemption will be read in the present value table. So if you look at the present value table, 10% the fifth period. Hey, I guess this thing is wrong, bro. Let me go ahead and read it again. 10% the fifth period is 3 points. This is wrong. 3.791. And then 10% on the present value table, the fifth period is 0 0.621. So remember what I'm doing. I see a question there from Olu, Olu Steven. Let me see if I can answer that real quick. Wow, 43 minutes gone. I didn't receive notification. Oh, sorry, Steven. You didn't receive notification for the broadcast today. I don't know. 
maybe YouTube decided not to send you notification or maybe you can check the notification again maybe you chose personalized so it is not all the notification that you will receive maybe you can go to my the bell icon again then when you click notification click all so that uh, all notification will be sent maybe you click personalize for that reason maybe sometimes youtube will find out that okay something is not uh, necessary for you and they may not send you the notification so maybe you can recheck your notification icon in relation to that but we are looking at calculating of cost of debt and then we are finished with irredeemable debt and we have looked at uh, how it is computed and we are on the irredeemable debt so what are we saying we are on redeemable debt rather sorry what are we saying we redeem our debt the cost of debt is the internal rate of return irr the internal rate of return so the way we compute the internal rate of return is to do a trial a trial and error thing so what is a trial and error we always start with the 10 percent so i am assuming in my pro forma that the bond is redeemable in five years time if that is the case we bring year zero the market value of the bond then the year one to year five we bring the interest if there is tax in the question we bring interest after tax then we bring the redemption now be careful here about what i said the interest the discount rate will be, will be read on the annuity table and then for the redemption the discount rate will be read on the what the present value table so that is the concept about that so once we get our answer here this is what gives us what the pre next oh, present value and i said if you do the first one like this and it is positive it means that the 10 percent is too low so you increase it but if you do this and it is negative it means that 10 percent is too high so you reduce it i hope you are getting the concept so let's look at the question about this real quick okay so let's get a question GPLC has an issue six percent debentures quoted at 85 x int. GPLC has an issue six percent debentures quoted at 85 x int. The debentures are redeemable in five years' time at a premium of 10 percent. So, listen to the question carefully. The debenture is redeemable in five years time at a premium of 10 percent so the requirement is a what is the re return to the investors and then b what is the cost to the company if the rate of corporate tax is 30 percent if the rate of corporate tax is 30 percent so let's go through it it means in the first one, the A aspect, there is no tax. So the interest we are going to be bringing here will be interest without tax. So let's look at how we go about it. So what do we say? We said KD equals IRR, the internal rate of return. And to be able to calculate the internal rate of return, we said it is A plus MPVA over MPVB minus MPVB B minus A. So how do we go about that? Let's see it. So I put my year down. I put my cash flow here. I put my discount factor. Now we are doing at 10% first, as always. Then we do the present value. Let me clean this side because I want to do it in one column like that or in one row. So, what do we do? Let's go. In year zero, we bring the market value of the loan notes. In year zero, we bring the market value of the loan notes. And in this question, we are told that the loan note is quoted at 85. So we bring the 85 here. Now year zero discount factor is 1.00. Now that 85 should be in bracket all the time. 
then we are told that the debenture is redeemable in five years' time. So, from year one to year five, we will bring an interest. Now, the interest rate on this debenture we are told is 6%. 6%. If it is 6%, that means our interest will be 6% by 100, and that will be what? $6. Remember, in the A aspect of this question, there is no tax. There is no corporation tax. So we go straight up. So we bring the six year, and then in the fifth year, we bring the redemption. So this is the interest, and then in the fifth year, redemption comes. Now, in the fifth year, we are told that it will be redeemed at a premium of 10%. If it will be redeemed at a premium of 10%, then we will find 10% of the nominal value, which is 10, and then we add it to the nominal value. So in the fifth year, it will be redeemed at 110. In the fifth year, it will be redeemed at 110. Then this is why I told you something. I said, when it comes to dealing with the issue about the interest, you read it on the annuity table, and then when it comes to the redemption, you read it on the present value table. So, annuity table and present value table. Now, from my illustration, I already have it here, five years. So, 3.791. Then, the redemption will be read on the present value table, and that is 0 0.621. I hope you are getting it. So, we multiply up to get a present value, and this is 22.75. And then this is 68.31. So when we finish, we calculate all, and that's the present value, the next present value, and that is 6.07. Now, so this is where you have to understand. You can see that when we use the 10%, we are getting a positive net present value. If we get a positive net present value, it means the 10% we used was low. So we will increase the 10%. Now, this one is discretional. So you can increase it to 15% or you can increase it to 20%. In my case, I'm going to increase it to 50% to calculate the second NPV. So again, this count factor at 15%, then present value. This is still 0 0.01. This is still a negative 85. But this time around, at 15%, we go and read it on the annuity table. So let's go to the annuity table at 15% for five years. That's 3.352. Then on the present value table also, we read the fifth period 15% and that is 0 0.495. 0 0.497, okay? 0 0.497. So once we have that, we still multiply the interest and the redemption by what? The discount factor under the 15%. So 6 by this, that should give us 15, sorry, 22.11, and then this is 54.67. So we add all up, and this will be NPV as well, and that will give us NPV of negative 10, 22. Okay? Now, this is the big question. Of these two NPVs, which one is NPV A and which one is NPV B? Always, the highest NPV is the B and the lowest NPV is the A. In other words, the highest discount factor is the B and the lowest discount factor is always what? The A. That is the concept. So, my cost of debt which is the same as the internal rate of return will be equal to A, and my A here is what? 10%. So 10% plus NPV A, 6.07 over 6.07. Now be careful here. The formula is minus, but you can see that the NPV A is minus 10.22. So again, again, is positive. So it will become plus 10.22, we put into bracket 15% uh, minus 10%. Does it make sense? So we punch all these out, and then our cost of debt is going to be 11.
11.86%. So this is how we compute the cost of debt if we are looking at the issue in relation to the redeemable debt. Remember, in this A aspect of the question, there was no tax. Okay, Olupo Steven, I think you asked a question. Let me look at it. It's redeemed at a discount. What will you do? Yeah, if it was redeemed at a discount of say 10%, Stephen, if it was redeemed at a discount of say 10%, then in that case, this place will be 90. <coughs> because at a discount means we are redeeming it below the nominal value. Okay? So in that case, this place would have been 90. But here, it is at a premium, that is why it is going to be 110. So if it is at a discount of 10%, then we are going to be bringing 90 there. So we find 10% of the nominal value and subtract it from the nominal value and bring the figure there. Right, so that is the first aspect of the question. So you can put it down real quick and then let's continue. So I'm going to give you some few minutes to write, those of you writing. Right, so if you have any questions, put them down as we continue. Now, <clears throat> the B aspect of the question is that we should calculate the cost to the company if the tax rate is, what, 30%? Yes. Now, I'm not going to be doing this, but I'll let you do it on your own, okay? I'll guide you for you to do it. The only thing that will change in the B aspect is that we will bring interest after tax. Now, how do we calculate interest after tax? This is 6% without the tax. Okay? 6% without the tax. There's a question there from Steven. Let me see. Can I download this into my flash? I need to watch it over the weekend. Yes, yeah, certainly you can download it. So, after the broadcast, yeah, it will be possible for you to download it because this is on YouTube, so it's available to be downloaded. So, Stephen, it's possible to download it after the broadcast. So, once I finish with the broadcast, the download will be enabled and you'll be able to download it. So, yes, it's possible to download it. Now, like I was saying, the income that if we are looking at the B aspect of the question where there is tax, like I said, I'm not going to do that. I will let you do that. So if you are bringing interest after tax, then our interest will be 6%, 1 minus the 30. And so that was going to be 4.2. So the 4.2 will be the interest after tax. So that 4.2 is what you put here for the 6. And then you go through the same step. You go through the same step. So you can do that on your own and then maybe send me the solution. I'll be great. I'll be grateful to look at it for you and then I'll guide you in relation to that. So this is how we calculate the cost of debt. Remember, cost of debt calculation is based on whether it is a redeemable debt or an irredeemable debt. If it is a redeemable debt, we use the formula. If it is an irredeemable debt, then the cost of debt becomes the weighted average or the internal rate of return. So let's go. Let's look at the final aspect. 
weighted average cost of capital. Weighted average cost of capital. Now, weighted average cost of capital is not anything difficult. It is just putting together the two things we've done already. Putting together, it means that the company is financed by equity as well as debt. So uh, the capital structure of the company is both equity and debt. So if the capital structure of the company is both equity and debt, how do we go about it? That is where the weighted average cost of capital comes in. So weighted average cost of capital is equal to the VE over VE plus VD times KE, okay, cost of equity, plus VD over VE plus VD times KD, 1 minus T. That is it. 1 minus T. So that is the formula for the weighted average cost of capital. Now, what is VE? VE is simply the value of equity. Okay? The value of equity. Now, how do we get the value of equity? Simple. The value of equity is equal to the number of shares times the market value per share. So in the question, we will have the number of shares. In the person, we will have the market value per share. So when we multiply it, that gives us the VE, the value of uh, shares. Okay? Then VD is the value of debt. Value of debt. Now, if you are dealing with the value of debt also, it's the same concept. Now, remember, every bond, so if the company is having a 10,000 debentures quoted at uh, $85, then the value of the debenture is going to be, so 10,000 debentures over $100 nominal times the 85. This is what will give us the value of the debt. Now, students mix the value of the debt, so we'll get the concept. So in the question, whatever value that is placed on the debt is brought. Then we divide that by the nominal value times the market value per hundred dollar bond. Then we get our value of this. Remember, KE debt based on the question could be computed using the dividend formula or using the capital asset pricing module. Whatever it is, you know how to compute it already from our discussion. KD, that is what we just did. If it is a redeemable debt, use the uh, internal rate of return. If it is an irredeemable debt, use the formula. But this is one thing you must understand. You will realize that in the weighted average formula, there is tax there, 1 minus T. Now, if you use the tax in the calculation of the KD, then you cannot use the tax here. So when it comes to dealing with the tax, you need to find out whether you are using the, you will use the tax in the work formula or you use the tax in the internal rate of return. Please note, if you use the tax while calculating the cost of debt, then you cannot use it when you are doing the work. It means in, in your workings, then one minus T will not come in. So it depends on where you want to use the tax. It doesn't mean you are wrong. If you use it here and you don't use it here, you will get your answer correct. If you use it here and you don't use it here, you will still get your answer correct. But the most important thing is this. You don't use the tax both in the calculation of the cost of debt as well as in the calculation of the weighted average cost of capital. So that is how we compute the weighted average cost of capital. The final thing you must understand is that weighted average cost of capital can be calculated at the book. Now, when we say book value sheet statement, the value of the equity, the nominal value of the equity, use that to calculate the work. Look at the nominal value. But when we say the market value, then you are and multiplying it by the quoted price. So these are what you have to understand when it comes to computation of the weighted average cost of capital. And by extension, 
these are what you have to understand about business of capital it has been a lengthy discussion four part series said if you are watching this video and you didn't begin with me make sure you get to the playlist go to the playlist title understanding financial management and you see business finance part one and watch them and go through them well so that you'll be able to understand this topic because this topic is fundamental and there is a question waiting for you in the exam hall. So that is it about it and uh, I will conclude on my discussion today and uh, thank you very much for joining us throughout the week and make sure you continue to share the video with others, subscribe to the channel and most important at 4 p.m. or 1600 GMT as we uh, discuss issues. So Monday, We'll be looking at something else. I'll be posting what we'll be doing on Monday in the community of what we'll be doing on Monday. If you have any questions also, leave them in the comment box below for you. Thank you very much for joining the broadcast today. And I'll see you same time on, here on our journey for the May 2020 examination. And by extension, whatever examination. Because this video will go beyond May 2020. Make sure the thematic areas you have to take away is this. The sources of finance, Islamic finance. Remember we discussed Muduraba, Muduru, uh, all of those names. Then uh, the cost of capital, the dividend module, the capital asset pricing module, and then the cost of debt, irredeemable debt, redeemable debt. Remember all of these concepts and you should be okay to go through it. So that is it about it. I'll see you same time in the discussion. Bye-bye.